Dionysus called it wine. He made enough to fill his flask, then looked back wistfully one more time at the place where Amp had died. The grapevines were going crazy now, spreading all over the woods, blooming with a vengeance and bearing more grapes. Dionysus nodded, satisfied. If he had his way, the whole world would be filled with grapevines in Amp's honor. He went back to the cave where he lived on Mount Nyssa. He showed his discovery to one of his foster moms, a nymph named Ambrosia. Yes, she was named after the godly food. I don't know why. At least it's better than cookie or snickerdoodle. Ambrosia took a sip of wine. Her eyes widened. This is delicious! Where's Amp? Oh, Dionysus hung his head. He died falling from a tree. That's terrible! Ambrosia took another sip. But this is good stuff! Soon she was sharing the wine with all of her nymph friends. The satyrs came by to see what the giggling was about. Pretty soon the whole mountain was one giant party, with dancing and singing and tiki torches and lots of wine. Dionysus kept making the stuff and passing it around. He could not keep up with the demand. Finally he taught the satyrs and nymphs how to make it themselves, and by the end of the night everybody on the mountain was an expert winemaker. The satyrs quickly discovered that if they drank too much wine, they got drunk. They couldn't think straight, see straight, or walk straight. For some reason, they found this hilarious, and they kept on drinking. An old satyr, Selenios, threw his arm around Dionysus' shoulder. You, sir, are a god. No, I mean that. The god of... What's this stuff called? Wine, said Dionysus. God of wine, Selenios hiccuped. Got any more? Now, kids... This is another good time to remind you that wine is for grown-ups. It tastes horrible and could seriously mess up your life. Don't even be tempted until you're at least 40 years old. Aw, oh, but Percy, you whine. Get it? Wine? It sounds like the satyrs had so much fun drinking wine. It might sound that way, kids, but satyrs can be pretty stupid. Again, no offense to my buddy Grover. You also didn't see the satyrs the morning after when they had splitting headaches and were stumbling into the woods to puke their guts out. Still, the nymphs and satyrs were so impressed with Dionysus that they decided he must really be a god. His invention was just that amazing. Maybe you're thinking, okay, it's wine. Big deal. How does that rate making Dionysus a god? If I invented tuna salad, would I be a god too? But wine was a major breakthrough in the beverage technology. Sure, people drink water, but water could kill you, especially in the cities. It was full of bacteria and other people's garbage, and, well, I'm not really going to get into it. Let's just say that water was gross. Nobody had invented canned soda or even tea or coffee, so you were pretty much stuck with water or milk. Even with milk, you had to drink quickly before it spoiled, since there were no refrigerators. Then Dionysus came along and invented wine. It didn't go bad as long as you kept it bottled up. Sometimes it even tasted better if you let it sit for a few years. You could water it down so it wasn't as strong, but the alcohol would still kill germs and stuff, so it was safer to drink than regular water. You could even adjust the taste to make it sweeter with honey, or vary the flavor by using different kinds of grapes. Basically, it was the super beverage of the ancient Greece. Not only that, but if you drank a little, it would mellow you out. If you drank a lot, it would make you giddy and crazy. Some people even thought they had visions of the gods if they chugged enough wine. Again, do not try this at home. You will not see Greek gods. You may get a close-up view of your toilet as you're throwing up, but you will not see gods. Word spread quickly about the new drink. Nips and satyrs from Mount Nyssa traveled the countryside, telling anyone who would listen about the awesomeness of wine and the god who made it, Dionysus. They set up tasting booths on the side of the road. They offered starter kits, including a potted grapevine, an instruction manual for making a wine press, and access to a toll-free customer service hotline. Dionysus became famous. Even regular mortals began to gather on Mount Nyssa every night for the ultimate party. Sure, they drank too much and got wild, but it was just for fun. The followers of Dionysus could consider themselves to be religious people. They called themselves the Bacchae the groupies of Bacchus, and partying was their way of going to church. They believed it brought them closer to all the gods, because Dionysus was destined to be the twelfth Olympian. How did Dionysus feel about that? 